Welcome to Find Your Nova Show. A show for aspirational leaders, dreamers, and innovators. Yes, for those who are new here, let us tell you what is a Nova. Oh yeah, Nova is actually Latin for a bright star. That's right. Here we believe that a child is bright in his or her own way. And all they need to do is find what they're naturally good at to unlock their full potential. Yeah, so if innovation, leadership, and that type of stuff is your vibe, you better hit the subscribe button not to miss a thing. We do guest interviews, Q&A sessions, Fun Corner, Nova Finder Compass, and much, much more. Ah, we've not introduced ourselves. So, my name is Charlene Joroge. I'm an alumnus of 2021, and my passion is in filmmaking and business. And I'm Wangari Gashogo, an alumnus of 2021 as well, and I have a passion for filmmaking, cinematography, and acting. So, before we introduce our guest for today, let us recap on our previous episode with Denis Sombachi. As a sportsman, I would say, because I, I would like to see ourselves as a public figure, uh, but how social media also helped us, or helped me, is uh, through social media, uh, we found, or I found a platform where I can control my narrative. But through social media, I found a, a channel through which I can be able to control my narrative. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's our first simple sandwich. Mm. Try it out. So, Wangari, are you ready to introduce our guest for today? Oh, Shalina, I'm more than ready. Let's not keep them waiting. So, he's an actor, lifestyle content creator, he's a globally renowned media personality. He is Lenana Kariba. <laughs> Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. I like that. Globally renowned media personality. Wow. Yeah. I made it. I made it now. I love that introduction. That was awesome. Okay. <laughs> um, so we know you're an actor, a cinematographer, and all that, but we want to know who exactly are you? Oh, well, my name is Lenana Kareba. I'm 33 years old. I am an actor, a lifestyle content creator. You said cinematographer, that's interesting. It's actually the point in my life where I started doing what I'm doing until I got into acting. So I don't really practice it as much, but uh, that's where my passion started at first, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the people would like to know, like, what was your background? Like, where did you grow up and how was it growing up? Uh, well, I mean, well, I grew up uh, in Ridgeways, which is, you know, in this Kambu area, so not far from here. And I mean, I had a very normal childhood, except, you know, I, I grew up with my brothers who were also at the time quite famous. And I guess I was used to that whole media lifestyle, even when I was very young. And when I, when I was young, I knew that I always wanted to get into the media and film side of, you know, of, of life. And so I, I, I knew I wanted to do film and that's why I started. And I just stumbled into acting and acting is actually what I do now most of the time. So you always knew you wanted to be an actor. You didn't want to become like a pilot, a geologist. I, I didn't know that I always wanted to be an actor. You know, when I was younger, what I wanted to be was uh, a race car driver. Imagine that. I wanted oh. to be like, it was like a rally or anything like that. I was really fascinated with like sports cars and the sports side of racing and all that stuff. I don't know. I really wanted to do that. Uh, and then, like I said before, the acting, I just stumbled into it. I knew um, at some point, I got into the whole film thing and I actually wanted to be a cinematographer. I wanted to be a director and produce and stuff, which is something that I feel like I'm going to do later on. Mm. Uh, but the acting thing is what I fell in love with. So that's what I do. Mm. And what was your high school experience like? Did you have nicknames? How was the whole journey? In high, school? Uh, high school, I actually loved my high school experience. It's funny, I was talking about this with a friend of mine earlier. and. You know, we're talking about going back to school and whether I would like to do that. And high school is probably the stage where I would repeat because I actually missed that so much. I did have nicknames in school. Um, one very popular one I had was Changes. And I don't know if you know this. Even I didn't know this at the time. Lenana School is called Changes. So people, people used to call me Changes all the time. And for a long time, I never understood it because I didn't know what it meant. And then one of my friends told me and I was like, oh, okay. So that was actually my nickname in high school. It was Changes. Yeah. Um, my other question is, so how exactly did you get into acting? Um, well, I was studying uh, electro electronic media and film. And one time a friend of mine said they were going for an audition and they wanted me to take them, uh, to take me with them. I said, yeah, sure, I'll take you. And so we went and I was just like hanging around 
waiting for them to finish with the audition. And of course, it was a long line. And this lady who I can't remember now, I can't remember her, but at the time she just came up to me with the script and she's like here and she started handing out the scripts to the people who are auditioning. And I told her, oh no, I'm not auditioning. I was just bringing a friend. She's like, it's okay, nothing hurts. Just go and read and see what happens. And that's exactly what happened. I went in and I thought, ah, let me just go and try. I mean, what, well, it's not gonna hurt anyone except you know me if I don't get the part. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I went in, I read, and that was it. And actually, that was the first edition that I ever did. And I got the part of the role. I was playing a doctor for a show called Saints. It aired on NTV. And <laughs> yeah, I, I was very lucky. It is not that easy. I was very lucky, but that's how I got into it. So what I'm hearing is you are natural at this. <laughs> <laughs> I've been told that before. I guess so. I mean, I, I think, you know, you're, you're told to find the skill that you have in life and try and focus on that and use it to, you know, find your way. And I guess acting is, is what found me, actually. Yeah, so. Wow, beautiful. And what was your first time on set? How was it like? Were you nervous? And if you were, oh, how did yeah, you cope was, with it? it? Was, I was nervous. It was nerve-wracking. I mean, I was standing next to people who I had watched on TV and admired, you know, like Nice Gidinji and Sarah Hassan and those kind, you know. And that's the first time we met. And I'm, and I'm, I'm doing my first show, my first time being in front of the camera. And it's in front of these people. And I'm, I was sweating and I couldn't get my lines. I was stumbling. I had to take like 17 takes from, for one scene. It was... It was quite nerve wracking, but you know, by the end of the day, in fact, my first day when I left, when we wrapped this, the, this, the set and I went home, I thought, man, I want to do that again. I really, I was so excited to go back to set the next day and we did the next day and the next day and then we finished the season and man, I fell in love with it. And so, yeah, it was of course at first, you know, I mean, I think everyone gets nervous their first time, but uh, yeah, I still get nervous now, especially when I go for auditions. I still do get nervous. Yeah, I do. I do. Um, talking about Sarah Hassan, you're actually doing Crime and Justice with her, yes? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, di I did a, an episode, a cameo in Crime and Justice, which is the season finale of season two. Yeah, so we, we acted together in that one. Yeah. I'm going to go watch that and find out how it ends. <laughs> yeah, let me know. <laughs> let me know. Okay. Yeah. Well, the topic of movies, how was it like acting with Sense8? Oh, Sense8. Um... Well, I, I don't know if you've watched it, and it's okay if you haven't. Uh, it's, I was in the second season, fifth episode. It wasn't like a big role or anything. It was a small part in the episode. But uh, for me, that was a moment that I'll never forget because it was, you know, you're, you're, you're in the same room as the people who, like, wrote and directed Matrix and stuff like that. And it's, 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 it's to, to think about that. And even if I wasn't, like, in a big part, but, like, to sit there and marvel at what was happening around me that was amazing i mean the way they they the way they handled their sets and everything was something i'd never experienced before and it was awesome it was really awesome so there's a difference between the sets there and here ah uh, not much i mean i think the difference obviously comes with the budget you know if you have more money to make a show or a movie or whatever it is uh the sets will be different in terms of uh sometimes how many cameras you can use when you're shooting and stuff like that yeah and interacting with the crew from Sense8, did it make you a better actor? Like, what kind of experience did you take from it? Um, I think every time I'm on set, every time you're doing something on set, you always become a better actor. There's no point that you're not doing something and you're not learning from what you're, you know, the work that you're doing. I mean, and I think you can apply that to everything. You know, it's not just acting. Whatever job that you're doing, every time you practice this thing, you become better at it. And... Yeah, I did pick up a lot from the time I was in Sense8. And I, like I said, I picked up a lot from all the shows that I've done, even Crime and Justice. And yeah. Um, so here at Nova, uh, we have a film club, actually. And they're doing their best to inspire young actors everywhere. Like, we, we were in the film club. And yeah, they did so much. Um, so now we want to know, first of all, uh, what advice would you give to young filmmakers like us? Or, uh, you know? Filmmakers or actors? And, yeah. I mean, uh, there's there's a lot of things that I could say, but I think one thing is that <clears throat> if you're, let's say for acting, you know, remember I told you I got my first audition. When I auditioned, I got my first role. Honestly, I was so lucky. It never happens like that. And a lot of people are so dejected the first time they go for an audition and then they're told, oh, no, we, we don't want you. And that can really put you down, you know, but the thing is you you have to remember if I wanted to cast you, let's say there's a certain role for a girl that I wanted to cast, 
you might be an amazing actress and I have no doubt, but you just don't look like the girl who I'm trying to cast in. And that's the, the reason why I can't use you. A lot of people forget that. And I think that's something that, you know, when you remember and try and keep that at the back of your mind, you'll be like, it's okay, I'll get the next one. And you will. I mean, I, I mean, I, I could, I mean, you guys would say that I've done a lot of stuff, but honestly, the things that you've seen me do on TV is like, a fraction of the auditions and stuff that I've always wanted to do. So it's like, I mean, you just have to keep going, honestly. If you don't make the first audition, go for the second one and the third one and the 50th one, something will always come up. Okay. Yeah. And um, aside from acting, what else does Lenana do? <laughs> well, that's a good question. Um, well, like I told you before, I'm a lifestyle content creator. And uh, I mean, it basically speaks for itself when I say that. But in terms of jobs, I'm, I'm an actor full time. That's, that's what I do. So like, I, I don't have anything. Um, we talked about the cinematography before. It's when I started out, in fact, uh, on Auntie Boss, if you've seen Auntie Boss, I started out as part of the crew before I became an actor on that show. And what I was, I was the camera assistant on that show. And so it was something that for me, I was really interested in and I wanted to do it. Uh, and then, you know, later on, a couple of seasons later, the producer came to me and said, hey, Rilson, I have this role that I think you'd be good for. If you want to play it, maybe you can move away from the crew and join the, the cast. And that's how I got the part. Well, you're really lucky. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I was, it was fun. Uh, so for me, I think that's something else that I've been trying to um, like practice and get really skilled at, at on the side is my cinematography and stuff. And I guess it comes off also with my content creation because you know, a lot of that stuff you have to shoot yourself. You don't have a team that's shooting that for you. Some people do, I don't, I do all that my, on my own. So that's something else that I'm really trying to get into right now. Okay, so you've been on a lot of shows from, you know, Changing Times to Auntie Boss to Selena. Okay, so then I was asking, what are some of the learning tips? What are some of the things you've learned along the way? Um, well, from since Changing Times, oh man, Changing Times <laughs> was another one of my first shows. So when I got my first job, it was Saints, but I got Changing Times about like two months after that. It was the same time later. And I remember getting the call to come for the audition. And when I walked, I mean, the thing is, I didn't know anything about what I was doing, obviously. I don't, I, I was still learning. So when I walked into the audition room, I thought this is exactly, this is going to be exactly like it was the first time I did it. I'm going to get a script. I just have to memorize it, try and figure out what this character would be like, and then act it out. And so I walk in and the director looked at me and she, and she says, um, pick someone that you would pick a girl from, from the lineup for guys who are waiting. And I said, uh, okay, I just picked someone who I didn't even know at the time. And she looks at me and says, there's no script, number one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a scenario. This is your girlfriend and you just found out she cheated on you or something like that. And I just want to see what happens. Go. And I'm standing there like, what? I have no direction whatsoever. I don't know what's going on. Uh, that was one of the things I had to learn very quickly is being very impromptu on set can be very, very helpful, especially if you're doing theater and stuff. And... I think uh, that was one of the challenges that came with having to audition, which today, even till today, I still don't like it. Even if you gave me a script, you know, auditioning is quite nerve wracking and stuff. But, uh, but I did get the part. I was on the show uh, for, the, for a short time, but I was on the show. And from changing times to even today to like now single Kiasi and, and uh, Crime and Justice, it's been, <laughs> man, it's been one hell of a journey. I think because I never went to acting school. So I never had to like learn things about how this is supposed to be done and how you portray these characters and how to, you know, get into emotions and things like that. I kind of just picked this up as I went along. That and watching a lot of movies, which I love doing. So I watched a lot of movies and I just used to pick up on what people were doing. And uh, it's one of those things you just learn as you go along. And I can honestly say that I never thought of myself as an, like a really good actor, but I can say that I have gotten better from the time that I started, for sure. Mm. For sure. And what are some of the failures that you had along the way? Uh, wow, well, you know, we talked about Sense8 before. I, I did get a part in Sense8 in season two, but I actually auditioned for season one. And 
I, I don't remember the character's name, but it was th the role that was played by Paul Ogola, who was the conductor for Van Damme. That's the role that I auditioned for. And I remember the, 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 the casting director called me and said, Lanana, I want you for this part. I think you'd be great. Come read for it. And I remember getting there, I had my lines and I, I, you know, I thought, okay, this is, I'm going to do it. And I really bombed that audition. It was so bad to the point, and I knew this casting director, we knew each other. She came to me and she said, she asked me what happened. Like, I don't know what happened in there, but that's not the Lenana I know. And I remember thinking, I'm just not that great and I'm done now. I'm just not going to do it. It was... And you know, it was such a big deal. I knew, I knew what Sensei was like. I knew the, 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 the magnitude of what this show was. And so for me, that really put me in a place. I was like, is this something I really want to keep doing? Um, but yeah, that was, that was kind of a low point for me when that didn't happen. I mean, I did get into the second season, but not the way I wanted. So yeah. So when you felt like, do I really want to do this anymore? What kept you going? Uh, well, you know, I, I talked to my friends and uh, a lot of my friends who I'm with now, they're also actors and... You know, even the casting director, the lady who thought that I really did terrible, she's like, you know, sometimes it happens. Uh, you don't necessarily have to be great at every audition. And, you know, sometimes it happens. And, yeah, they just gave me a little pep talk and I just pushed through. And I reminded myself that if this is something I want to keep doing, I can't let something like that hold me back. Because at the end of the day, just because I didn't do that very well doesn't mean I'm not going to do the next thing well. And, well, you know, I mean, here I am today. So... It's a good thing that I didn't give up. Yeah. What's your favorite genre to shoot? Because you're shooting crime and just you choose mystery. Single case is funny. So single. I mean, yeah. Uh, I I have done a comic. I have done both like with crime and justice. It's very like drama and action based. And for me, that was the first time I kind of did something like that that had a lot of action in it. You know, and that was fun for me. I enjoyed it. I do enjoy comedy a lot more. I didn't, when I, when I did Anti-Boss, which was for me, that was, you know, it was comedy. Uh, that was the first time I ever did anything like that. And I think comedy has a lot more room for just running off the script and kind of like making things your own. And I think I enjoyed that a lot. Um, so for me, I'd say comedy, really. I mean, I mean, I, I have done a lot of things like Single Kiasi, which is a, you know, romantic drama and stuff. And I think for me, that's just typecasting. It's things like that are not really what I'm like. You know, when you see me playing these characters like on Single Kiasi, it's not really what I'm like, so, yeah. We're not the only ones in this studio, so I'm sure that the Nova Pioneer students would like to ask you some questions. Yeah, sure, of course. Um, yes. Um, hi, Lenana. My name is Krista. So I have a question about your most memorable moment on set. Yes. Ah, uh, wow. Um, it's going to be hard to just pick one, but... Um, we had talked about Sense8 earlier on. I think for me, that was one of my most memorable moments on set because, like I said, the, the magnitude of what this thing was and the people that I was surrounded by, I mean, that was, for me, so amazing. And being part of a show like that, even though it wasn't like a big part for me, was something that I know I can take home and be like, I did this. Yeah. If I had to pick one, maybe that. But there's a bunch of them. I mean, a lot of things happen on set when... You can't really like pick one specific thing, but uh, for me, I'd say that that's probably one of the ones I'll never forget. Yeah. Hi, my name is Abai, and uh, my question for you is: Who do you look up to? Uh, as well, I mean, this can sound maybe a little cliche, but uh, of course, my dad is always someone I've looked up to because he's always done everything for us in our family. I mean, there was four of us, you know, and he was the provider. And he was very supportive. You know, a lot of people go through this thing, you know, when you, when you go and tell your parents, hey, I want to be an actor, they're like, okay, but are you going to get a real job after that? Because they don't think of it that way. My dad didn't. He just told me, is this something you're sure you want to do? And I told him, yeah. He said, okay, cool. And I'm behind you 100%. And I hope you, you know, you become the best and you do the best that you can. Uh, in terms of acting, I mean, there's a lot of actors I could probably mention right now, uh, like Denzel Washington. And, you know, for him... It's, yes, he's a great actor, but the thing I actually admire about Denzel is that for him, I think he's a family man first before he's an actor, and he always puts that, I feel like he does. I'm not saying that I know. I feel like he always puts that family, family mentality ahead of his acting because you've never really had drama about Denzel Washington. Like, I, for me, I don't think, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you have. I've never had any kind of drama or any kind of scandals from him, and I think that's one of the things when I think I want to get to that level, that's what I want. I just want to be like... You know, 
I don't want to have any drama. I want to, that's the, one of the things I look up to, actually, yeah. So my dad and Denzel Washington. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what's yeah. your favorite Denzel Washington film? Oh. If you were to pick just one. Man, just one? Yes, just one. Ah, you guys make this difficult. That's probably the hardest question you've asked today. Uh, uh, man, Denzel Washington film, the um, training day. At the top of my head, training day for me was, you know, training day was, was one of the roles where he, from the time that I started watching him, he really stepped out of the things that he was doing. And I think it was the first time that for me, even I ever, I ever heard him or play a role like that, that was so like bad and so like dark and stuff. And for me, that's, that's one of the ones that I took away from, from Denzel training day for sure. Are there any other actors who you like watching you think are good? Um, yeah, uh, I, I love Robert De Niro. Love his acting. Um, Hugh Jackman. Uh, Dwayne Johnson, I love Dwayne Johnson. Here's the thing, I don't, here's the thing, I don't think like, you can't really put them in the same category. Yeah. You know, Dwayne Johnson is more like a superstar than an actor. But, but uh, I think it's his ethic of how much work he puts into his film and his everyday, everyday things that he does. Yeah. And I love that about him. I love that. He really puts 110% in everything he does. And that's why some people might think he might not be the best actor in the world, but he is doing the most because for him, he's like, this is what I want to do. I'm going to wake up every day and I'm going to go get it. And I love that attitude. So for him, that's why he's on the list. Yeah. So Krista asked about your most memorable time on set, but I'd like to know what is like your most embarrassing time on, on the set? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I can tell you, but I, no, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, embarrassing, I think. Um, yeah, maybe one, <laughs> maybe one. When I was doing Selena, because I, I, I did do Selena for some time, and people who, the people who know me are the ones, who, you know, if you don't know, my Swahili is not the, the strongest thing about me. Swahili is something that I struggle with, and on Selena, I had to speak it constantly. And it's one of the things that I had to really like sit down with the script and get it and try and understand and like get the words and get the lines. And that was very tasking for me. Um, but I remember the first, the, one of the first days that I was on set, I really felt so confident. I'm like, hey, listen, I auditioned for this. They must have picked me for a reason. Because even when I did the audition, it was in Swahili. And I'm like, they must have picked me for a reason. So I'm gonna go into this just all confident and you know, do the scene. So the first scene of the day comes up, I have my lines. And as I walk on to set, even now I can't remember what I was, what, what the, the lines or the scene was. But I remember walking on to set when the director said action and I walked into set so confident as Regan and I, I did my lines and I'm, and at the end of the scene, everyone burst out into laughter because, and I was like, what, what happened? And like I said, I can't remember what was said, but it was, way off from the script. Um, not a lot of it, but a lot of it was way off from what was supposed to be said on script. And for me, you know, that, that moment was like, oh God, I can't believe that just happened. <laughs> but yeah, but you know, I learned from it. I grew again, uh, but yeah, still. And I still had a lot more after that actually. Cause like I said, it was very challenging for me, but I, I, I still persevered and I stuck through, <laughs> yeah. Don't ask me to do that now because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna embarrass myself for you people. <laughs> yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll teach you something that I learned um, a, a long time ago, which really helped me in my acting. It was called holding the camera. And this is something that, you know, when we're shooting a scene, actually, I'll do this with you, actually, if you don't mind, yeah? Stand with me here. Now we're doing this thing together. No matter what happens, you can't break away from your, your character, what, what you're playing. And so um, one thing is that if we're doing a scene like a close-up like this, we're looking at each other, you can't break eye contact. And don't dance around looking at, you see, I don't know if you guys can see this now, but if we're looking at each other like this, and you see I keep looking at each eye when we're talking now, and you can see my eyes dancing around, that doesn't really work. Let me actually take off my glasses for this, you'll see better. Here's what happens. We'll do this now, right? And I explained this before about how this really shocked me before. So we'll do a scene like that, let's say, we are together, right? And we are dating, and I lied to you about something that you're really not happy about. This is me trying to apologize to you, but you don't want to hear it. Mm. Baby, listen, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I, I don't even know who that person is. Please? Baby, come on, listen to me. 
please say something, anything. Baby, come on, you know I love you. I would never do anything to hurt you, come on. I guess you'd have thought of that before. All right, that was good. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lenana, for being with us on set. We've enjoyed learning how you found your Nova, and I hope you enjoyed as much as we did. Oh, I enjoyed it so much. Thank you guys so much for having me. Ta really had fun. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so guys, that's all we have for you today. Make sure to tune in to catch the next episode of Find Your Nova. Till then, see you on the brighter side. Bye! Bye.